Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Comrade President Angolo Mbumba, and my dear First Lady, Madam Siski Mbumba, Your Excellency, Founding President and Founding Father of the Namibian Nation, Tatekuru um, Sam Safishuna Nyoma and Mekuru, Your Excellency, Second President of the Republic of Namibia, Comrade Ifikepunye Pohamba, and our incredible former First Lady Mekuru Penehupi for Pohamba, your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government present, and First Ladies who are present as well, please allow me to stand on the protocol established. I'm a very proud Namibian today. I'm proud because, thank you. I'm proud because a boy who was born under a tree at a cattle post in Grootfontein, is being recognized and loved by the world. And he deserves it. Because Hage loved, and he was loved. The outpouring of grief since his passing is a testament to how deeply he was loved. For us to be joined by so many dignitaries from all over the world, including so many presidents, all of whom he regarded as his friends, speaks to his ability to make enduring connections. Hage connected easily to people, and people from all walks of life connected easily to him. I remember being in a holding room, and former president of Nigeria, President Buhari, who generally appeared like a soft-spoken person, was standing alone, quietly minding his own business. Hage walked over to him, and within two minutes, I heard a roar of laughter. I turned around assuming it was Hage, as he was such a joyful person. But to my surprise, the roar was coming from President Buhari, and Hage was quietly giggling next to him. His sincerity had a way of connecting with everyone. That same sincerity of his has united us in grief from across oceans, throughout the continent, and in every corner of Namibia. Hage, the internationalist, the Pan-African, the proud Namibian, the family man, the father to many, the joyful giver, the man who spoke of the Namibian house, a house where we pull together in the same direction, a house with a strong foundation. In mourning Hage, Namibia became everything he wanted us to be, united, law abiding and pulling in the same direction. In his death, Hage truly came alive. As he transitioned out of the limits set by his earthly body, we also transcended the political, racial and ethnic boundaries we sometimes impose on ourselves. Hage was dedicated to building an inclusive united Namibia that lived up to its potential. He wanted the country's integration of cultures and the lack of tribalism he was raised in. He wanted to see the same integration and unity in his blended family. He and I, Mangaliso, Helmut, Nangi, Oshoveli, Dangos, Nino, Junior, and Kayla, as well as many of his sons and daughters that he took as his own. The love and unity you see in our blended family are a testament to his leadership skills, even at the family level. Hage was our North Star. When we looked at him, we knew in which direction to go. He may no longer be with us, but he did leave us with a map that has clear directions. Many told me this week that they felt lost, orphaned, fatherless. Some feel like they lost a baobab tree that shielded them from the sun, their protector, their defender, and mentor. I feel the same. I feel like I no longer have my anchor. I feel that if Hage died, what am I doing here? But the answer is in Hage's name. Hage means the one who arrived. Gottfried, as German-speaking people know, it means God's friend. President Pohamba, President Chisakedi, they loved calling him Gottfried. Gottfried means God's friend. And he loved to tell us that Gay in Genkop stood for big 
and that nobody must ever try to reduce him. God's friend arrived on this earth on 3rd of August, 1941. He conquered the big things his surname required of him. And when his time was up, he left. Like he did, it's up for us to define our purpose and live up to it before our time is up. When you become what your name suggests, in some languages, in English, it's called normative determinism. Hage was indeed the one who arrived. He arrived on God's time and he left on God's time. God's will is not our will. Described as a destiny shaper by somebody who knew him well, he contributed significantly to shaping this country's destiny and that of many individuals. Hage was raised by his grandparents, O Lucia and O Hans. Like most children raised by old people, Hage was an old soul with a youthful spirit. He called his mother, Rosalia, Osi, which means sister, and it was old Lucia who he regarded as his mother. He told me that when, when he was young, that, that old Lucia never believed he could do anything wrong. Love was foundational to his high level of confidence. Hage had confidence and courage. He was always a leader. I remember when he joined Twitter in 2014, and the young people will remember this. Young people asked him to follow them, and his answer was, and I quote, I'm a leader, not a follower. He was joking, but you needed to listen carefully sometimes to Hage's jokes, as often he used a joke to soften a hard truth, and he actually meant it. Hage was indeed a leader. He was not a follower. He marched to the beat of his own drums, and like a true leader, he spent political capital on issues that he knew were for the greater good in the long term, even if it was unpopular in the short term. I've always admired his ability to understand complex problems quickly. While others found a problem for every solution, Hage always found a solution for every problem. He was such a good problem solver that often he would turn a casual conversation into a solution-finding exercise, even though you did not ask him for a solution. Remember I said that he was an old soul with a youthful spirit. At 19, Hage was a teacher, when being a teacher was simultaneously being a respected community leader. You immediately became a church elder, taught Sunday school, and commanded respect. He always laughed at how he had to counsel married couples when he barely knew anything about relationships. Another leadership experience he always narrates was how, on his way into exile, he had the privilege of meeting and being guided by the great Jose Akutako, a meeting that he always spoke about as an immense privilege and which I suspect drove his desire to build a shrine to enhance the knowledge of current and future generations about the greatness of Jose Akutako. Hage was not only a leader, but he was generous in recognizing the leadership of others. But I digress. We all heard his eulogy. Hage was always in a position of power, whether as a teacher, a young man, or a president much later in life. And with the full confidence of President Nyoma, Hage has wielded power for most of his life. For a powerful man, Hage was very humble. But like all powerful men, he was also very complex. But within his complexity was simplicity, authenticity, consistency, and vulnerability. This is what made him a people's person. He had a heart for people, and people had a heart for him. And I want to thank his brother, the President of the Republic of Namibia, for according him the hero's funeral that he deserves. I'd like to also thank all of you for giving him a send-off, befitting of a hero. My husband was an honest man, a man who spoke his mind even when it was inconvenient and uncomfortable to do so. He's blunt when discussing third terms and leaders who overstay their welcome. In reflection, Hage and I were informed by doctors on 16 January 2024 that he had cancer after a biopsy. We went to our first oncology visit on the 17th of January to devise a treatment plan. And on 18 January, he, he insisted on releasing a press statement notifying the public that he had cancer. Did he know how long he had to live? The answer is no, he didn't. His passing was traumatizing and unexpected. He was eager to retire. We had such plans. 
and true to his word, he didn't overstay. In the last few months, he spoke often about ensuring a smooth transition. And even though he left too early, the transition was smooth. It's just not the one that he expected. His concern about abrupt departures always centered around smooth transition and ensuring that there were no power vacuums. The country swore in a new president on the same day he passed, and there was no power struggle. We should be proud of ourselves and our political leadership. And that's both from the governing party and our opposition. If there was a display of political maturity, it was in that moment, and long may it continue. Many people can tell you where and what they were doing when they heard that Hage Genkop was no more. I'll tell you where I was. I was at his side, shocked to the deepest part of my core that someone so full of life, so full of love, had just taken his last breath. Death will humble you. We are not called by our maker when it's convenient for us or those who love, who love us. We are called when the Lord so decides. It's been raining since Hage passed away. Yesterday when his coffin was outside, Casa Rosalia, which is our private residence, the sun appeared briefly from behind the clouds and shone straight on his coffin. When I walked back into Casa Rosalia and sat down, the clouds had returned and there was a rainbow. These things do not happen by coincidence. That's the Lord telling us we lost a great man. Hage's passing is a reminder to all of us to be prepared. I was not ready to lose Hage. And from the massive outpouring of collective grief from all of you, it does not appear that any of us were ready. Hage wore his heart on his sleeve, and in response, this country wept. The scenes we saw yesterday were heartbreaking and heartwarming in equal measure. A nation united in grief, but celebrating their departed president. Hage's transparency has helped us in more ways than one. And because he spoke to us so often about his preferences regarding his legacy and expectations from us as his immediate family, it was easy to reach a consensus on key decisions. Please go and update your wills. Speak to your family about your preferences about, because death knocks unexpectedly. Funeral arrangements and decisions surrounding death are made by people who are grieving and relationships can be tested. And I want to thank my blended family and extended relatives of the Genkop family for passing this very difficult relationship test. Since the morning of, Janu of the 4th of February, a dull ache settled into my stomach and it has remained there to date. Grief unleashes anarchy in your system as your mind, emotions, and body simply do as they please, when they please. One minute you're walking and talking, and the next moment, you are gasping for air as a wave of intense sadness washes over you. When you lose someone you, we love, we lose a piece of ourselves. And the closer you are, the bigger that piece. And Hage gave so much of himself that we all had a piece of him. And may we all be consoled. Hage's brothers, Peter Kachavivi, President Bumba, and his sister, First Lady Siskin Bumba, have been with us as the Genkop family since this nightmare started and have not left our side since. The peace they lost of Hage was big, and despite their grief, they focused on keeping us whole. First Lady Siski sat with me at the hospital during the day and brought me soup in the evening because my children went to report me that I was not eating. Many years ago, she told me that if I was ever in trouble with Hage, which was often, I should say, oh, Hage ba achaba. And one day I found myself in trouble and I said, Ay, oh, I give a khaba. And he laughed so hard he forgot that he was supposed to be annoyed with me. And he asked me, was it Siski or Beans who told you that? And I told, so I said it was, no, it was Siski. So he says, okay, next time when you want to escape consequences, you should say, oh, I give a key achaba.
The Vice President, Her Excellency Netumbo Nandindaitwa, has also saved me. When I got back from the morgue that morning, I walked into the house for the first time as a widow, and the abbess immediately tried to swallow me. She lifted me from the floor where I had fallen and spoke to me in a stern, reassuring, and compassionate voice. She prevented me from sinking deeper into the darkness that constantly lurks, and we must be grateful for the leadership that we have in this country. There was an old man on TV. There was an old man on TV, I think he was from Kunene, he was crying. He said he needed to travel to Vintuk to bury his president. And as I watched, I cried with him. What can I say to all of you, Namibians and non-Namibians all over the world who've mourned Hage like he's yours? In many ways he was. Hage never wanted to be owned. He belonged to all of us. He accepted that, and as a family, we accepted that too. I'm not the same person I was before this nightmare started. I'm not even sure who I am without Hage's constant love. All I know is that I see many things very differently now, and we all should. We came to a near emotional standstill, and perhaps this is the time to press a reset button on how we relate to each other as individuals, families, and citizens. Death brought us together, no matter what our differences were before it, and it's love, our shared love for this country that will keep us together. And there's a duality to love and grief. Love is replaced by grief, and grief is replaced by love. We mourn because we loved. I saw many broken people, particularly those who worked with Hagia. And the pain was deep because the connection was equally deep. I've not ruled out seeking mental health support to cope, and I would encourage anybody who's struggling to shake off the feelings of sadness and loss to do the same, particularly the people who continue to work at the presidency. Hage's ordeal put me in the front row of the devastating impact of cancer. It also required that I spend a lot of time with many incredible Namibian doctors in the last few weeks. All of the doctors I interacted with are concerned about the rising cases of cancer in Namibia and what appears to be a global phenomenon. A few mentioned that they were pleased to see an increase in men looking to be screened for cancer once the president announced that he had cancer. The WHO recently announced a frightening projection of a rise of 77% in cancer cases by the year 2050. If anyone is watching megatrends in public health care, cancer care, particularly the inequities that define it, should be a priority focus area. It certainly will be for me. I want to thank all the healthcare workers who helped us during this difficult period. Everyone went over and above the call of duty, and to the staff in the presidency at CASA, the private office, security, medical protocol, all I can do is thank you for the love you showed and continue to show our beloved Hage, and us as a family and much respect to how you continue to perform your duties despite your grief. This extends to all of you, the dignitaries present today, and everyone who's mourned Hage. The singing and celebration of life have comforted us as we are sure that Hage was loved, and through our collective memories, He'll live forever. President Nyoma, President Puhamba, we love you. We will not wait until you leave us to tell you how important you are and that you are our heroes. <clears throat> Hage was because you were. Even though Hage has left us, the legacy continues. Oh, Hageba, ke Akhba. You defined love. You are loved by all of us, and nothing will ever be the same without you. The people's president, my president, my husband, my best friend. You were born a peasant and died a president. Rest in power, August. Thank you.